We have already 26 people connected. That's great. Would anyone like to introduce themselves meanwhile? I would love to hear where you're from, uh, what languages you speak, what is it that you're expecting from this presentation? Anyone? Hi, my name is Brinda. Hello. I'm coming from Pondicherry in India. Mm -hmm. uh, I can speak in French because my uh, native place also is on uh, parler en français. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. How did you say you pronounce your name? Correct. Brinda. Brinda. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to introduce themselves meanwhile? Hello, everyone. Hello, how's it going? Yeah, great. My name is Oba Ejiturun. I am streaming from UK, York. UK, awesome, nice. How's it going there? Yeah, great. Awesome, what do you expect from the presentation? Oh, I, I'm expecting to like be updated and how to process my CV mm -hmm. because I'm looking for new Good. application very soon. So awesome. I'm expecting to see new tips and very latest good. updates. I really hope this is useful. Please participate. That would be, I think, amazing. And I think you, you will learn some interesting things today. Thank you so much, Uba. Thank you. Okay, guys, so if we, if we will, we'll begin the presentation now. Thank you so much again for those who were here on time. Um, this presentation, this is actually a workshop. Um, so it's meant to be a little bit engaging. So I really hope that you guys can participate so we can learn together. Um, it is going to be 30 minutes long and it is part of the graduate job hunt. So for those who don't know, uh, the graduate job hunt is a two weeks event that happens every year and that it is being hosted by Europe Language Jobs, which is the company that I represent here today. And I'm going to be introducing the company to you also um, in a little bit. But the Greta Job Hunt, for those who don't know, it's actually an event that's meant for um, students or recent graduates or those who are about to graduate and they are willing or wishing uh, to start their um, work experience. And so we have specific topics. The last workshop was um, about the elevator pitch. Uh, this one is about the CV. And then we have also another workshop coming up this week, which I will be sharing more information uh, after this uh, session. So today we're going to be going over how to write an eye-catchy CV. But before we begin, I wanted you to understand a little bit more where we're coming from, why is it that we are introducing this to you and why it could be uh, somewhat interesting, right? So what is it that we all have in common today? So um, I'm part of Europe Language Jobs, which is again, the company hosting this event and this workshop. So Europe Language Jobs, for those who don't know, um, is the main job board for multilinguals across Europe. So what does that mean? So we are a job platform, so we don't take care of recruitment, but we do work um, directly with multinationals across Europe, uh, looking for different types of uh, profiles. So what are those profiles? They're looking for candidates that are just like you, right? Candidates like Uba or Rodham, uh, Candidates that basically um, speak different languages, candidates that um, are in different sectors, they are located in different countries, and a lot of the times they also don't speak the native language of that country. So for instance, I come from Brazil and I'm living right now in Barcelona, but let's say I don't speak Spanish. So what is it? Um, how can I find a job, right? So this was the whole idea of the company, to be able to offer positions for different language speakers all over Europe. So now that we have a little bit more an understanding on that, um, this is why we're hosting this specific topic with um, candidates and people just like you with these language skills looking for different opportunities. So what can we expect from today's agenda? So today we're going to be covering a little bit of um, some do's and don'ts of um, writing a CV. We're going to go over also some top secrets on how to stand out 
And I'm going to give you guys some real life examples so we can understand a little bit more um, in the visual aspect of it. So some CV do's and don'ts. Uh, who would like to let me know a little bit more from their own knowledge? What are some um, very important things that must be in a CV? Feel free to unmute yourself. Your education. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What else has to be in a CV? Apart work from your experience. Education, work experience, of course. Your personal information. Personal information. Exactly. I see also right there, contact information, personal information. Uh -huh. Anything else? Well, skill and hard skill. Mm -hmm. Skills, competencies, right? Reference. Certificates, courses. Awesome. So I see that a lot of you are mentioning very interesting topics. I see also in the chat languages, programs, no? So hard Start skills, skills, soft skills. It is quite interesting because we're going to see today that some membership, internship, membership. exactly. Membership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an association, organization. That too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from and some... first of all, headline of title. What is title it? Title of title of the person. What works? Engineer, lawyer, doctor. So the main profession of the of the candidate, correct? Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, welcome. So here we have, um, what do I need to have in my CV? So most of it is like what you guys were saying, right? So we have here contact information. What should be in the contact information? Your name, your email, your phone number, uh, your LinkedIn, if you have one, which is very recommendable. Uh, obviously it should be hyperlinked, especially if it's um, being sent digitally. Um, and also your location. So when we mention location here is, is a little bit uh, important to mention that you don't need to put your entire address. You can just put a zip code and in the country, right? So for GDPR reasons, also for protection and all of that. So uh, we're going to see also that some countries they do um, require that while others they don't. The second topic, photo, which a lot of you actually, I don't believe anyone mentioned, um, but some countries they require, uh, well, they are not legally always required to um, have a photo, but a lot of the uh, countries, they do prefer to see a CV with a photo, but there are countries that uh, they don't have this custom, so like UK. Okay. Um, now, of course, the experience, and that is like what all of you were mentioning, work experience or mentorship, right? So if you're also a student, um, here's where you can add everything that you've learned through programs or through tasks or through any types of projects during your studies, your education, your skills, and then your languages. So here in skills, there are also competencies, and this is also uh, depends on the country and in the languages. It's very important in the language part that you add the level that you speak. So you're not just going to say, I speak English, I speak French, and I speak, I don't know, Italian. So you have to be very specific. And if you have a certificate, that's also really good. A lot of the companies, although you have it in there, um, let's say that you have a B2 in, I don't know, German, and they might uh, test that, right? So during an interview, they might do it in German. So it's important to keep that in mind too. So we want to be as transparent as possible when it comes to that. And then in regards to the order, um, a lot of people have this question, should I add the experience first? Should I add the education first? Which one should I add? So here is, um, it depends on um, exactly the experience that you've had. So let's say you just graduated. So you mostly will, will add the education first and then the experience because you probably don't have as much experience. Now, let's say you already graduated, you already had entry level positions, you had a bunch of internships, then it is best to add the experience first and then the education. Okay. Yes, I think someone had a question. No? Okay. Now, I believe the next one is um, some common mistakes on CVs. Can anyone mention uh, an example of something not to do? 
Well, uh -huh. uh, somebody, it's not mistake, it's a different point of view. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the part of experience mentioned that you don't have to explain all the duties of your experience, but another, which I'm fault, you have to explain all your duties in your experience work, previous works, because I've uh, sent my CV to, uh, I put my CV in LinkedIn, so many employer in different sectors want to show my skills. Mm -hmm. So this is not mistake, point of view, mm -hmm. who follow a uh, summary of my experience, uh, uh, ask to just refer to my, uh, refer to work and uh, write summary about your work, but another, uh, ask you to provide all the information about your previous works. Okay. This is what I'm following, mm -hmm. frankly, because when I put my CV in LinkedIn or the employed uh, website, I address to not one employer, I address to all employers in many se sectors. Mm -hmm. So they have so all my skills. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's a mistake mm -hmm. or not. Right. And no, 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 that's right. Um, of course, every recruiter has a style. All yeah. the companies, they do look for something specific. That is why it's very important to do some research right beforehand mm -hmm. to check the job description. Um, but mostly you try to give your best, right? So it's mm -hmm. good that you receive this feedback for next time, maybe applying to the same company, perhaps. But this is very specific. So I don't know exactly like you said, maybe it's a different point yeah. of view and maybe not a mistake, right? Yeah. Right. Anyone else? common mistakes in CVs. So this is something that maybe could uh, keep you from lending your, uh, the job that you want to pursue. No one? Yeah. Okay. Guys, so actually. most common mistakes. So there we go. So here we have, and some of you may think that this is very uh, foolish, but it is, uh, it really happens. So the first one would be inappropriate email addresses. So. Mm -hmm. We do have many addresses. Maybe when we were younger, we created different ones with funny names like lemon pie or I don't know, different things at uh, gmail.com. So make sure that your email address is very um, uh, professional, right? So it has your name, sometimes your last name, make sure that it, it, it looks professional. Another thing, uh, wrong contact information. Let's say you forgot to double check your CV and you added the wrong phone number, or you added a letter that wasn't supposed to be in your email address, or you added a different number, right? So make sure to double check that. And that goes for the same thing in the grammatical mistakes. So a lot of the times when you read something over and over, you're like, everything sounds perfect. So give it to someone else, a friend that maybe um, has a good eye to detail or someone else, just simply like that someone that hasn't read that um, your CV before. So they're able to spot things faster. So this is always really good to do. Another thing is um, here it, it says two or more CV pages. So this is also um, a little bit relative, right? Because it depends if you just graduated, it depends how much work experience you had. If you have 10 years of work experience, it's it's very difficult that you're not going to have two pages, right? So that's okay. But normally, and for the purpose of this workshop, for the purpose of the graduate job hunt, if you're a recent graduate, if you are about, uh, if you just graduated, you should be able to concise and to have all of the information in one page. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And that also go because right here we have a bullet point that says untailored CV. So if you tailor your CV to a specific job offer, which is very important, uh, you're not going to have all of the information that you normally would wish to have in your CV, everything that you've done your whole life. So you do have to customize, to personalize your CV to any um, position that you're applying to. And I know that that sounds a little bit tiring, a little bit, oh my God, do I really have to do that? But um, yes, it is very uh, recommendable. Another thing is make sure to choose a readable font. So nothing that's super, let's say stylish, unless you're a graphic designer and you want to prove a point, make sure to be organized, to have your information concise and make sure, um, well, you can 
right? This is not really, uh, this is also relative, I believe, uh, to use uh, CV templates. So the thing is about CVs is that a lot of the times um, people use the same CV template. And so the recruiter is a little bit tired of seeing the same template over and over, right? So make sure that you add something different, a little touch or change the color or change the order, change a little bit things so, so it doesn't look the same. All right. Now here are some secrets to uh, secret tips to stand out when writing a CV. So this is not <laughs> really always a secret, right? Because we all know that adding a summary, so that's a headline or a bio, if, if you call it like that, um, to call the attention of the recruiter. So basically a summary shouldn't be uh, a huge paragraph. It should be maybe two to three uh, sentences max. And this is meant to attract uh, the, the company to tell them why you're so you know, um, special and what is it that you're looking for? Like, what are your objectives? What is it that you do? How do you differentiate, differentiate yourself? Um, so this is right away um, something that is very important. A lot of people don't edit because they think, okay, I already added my title in there. So I work with marketing and I work in sales and they just have their names and then they have their titles under, but this is not enough, right? So adding a summary, it doesn't have to be, an entire paragraph again, but a tiny summary could set you apart. Another thing that's very um, interesting is that not all formats um, are recommendable. So from what we've gathered here inside uh, the company by working with so many different multinationals, is that having uh, your um, CV in PDF format, so download it or upload it in a platform or on your LinkedIn, or even sent out personally, having your CV is in a PDF format is the most recommendable one. Of course, if you add a, a Word document, supposedly that is okay, but it also leaves uh, room for someone else to edit it. So the best one is usually PDF. Uh, again, let's try to stick to one page max. If you do have many years of experience, it is okay. It is understandable to have two pages. So don't stress too much about that. And then uh, a secret that um, not a lot of people keep in mind, but to add keywords. So what does that mean, guys? So what, what adding keywords to your CV uh, mean? Who could tell me that? Keywords, uh, I think uh, your skills, you are, uh, what's your target? what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. This is uh, some key words of uh, the CV of the person, I think. Okay. Anyone else has um, any other ideas of what keywords could mean in this, in this case? I think most uh, especially the job description from the employers try to stick to their job description, what they are looking for, then mm -hmm. you put it. So basically you're saying to read what the company's adding in the job description and to use some of those words in your CV. Is that what you said? Yes. That's exactly it. Perfect. So both of your responses are good, no? So basically the keywords, they are your objectives, but they are also words that your uh, future employee are using in, um, they are using in the, in the job description. Why? Because a lot of the times, and especially multinational companies, if all of you are looking for a job in a multinational, uh, most of them, they use specific programs. So like ATS programs, right? So those are uh, specific systems used to uh, sometimes scan CVs because a lot of the companies, they receive so many, and this is not all of them again, a lot of them have recruiters, they do go, there's a human being looking at your CV, but a lot of the times, your CVs, they are scanned. And having those keywords in there, they can, you know, uh, select you from that. So keep this in mind, too. And maybe even sometimes make it in bold or highlighted or try to use it more often, use specific, specific variations. Okay. So now um, I have gathered um, three CVs here. And I would like some engagement from you. So for this CV, this is um, an example of a bad CV, right? So who could tell me 
the mistakes here. What are some mistakes in the CV? The photo is not very clear. I think it's like, it looks like a passport photo. Exactly. <laughs> that is it. That's a passport it's photo. ID photo, yeah. What is it? ID photo mm -hmm. in Spain. Mm -hmm. It's right there in the top right yeah. corner. Oh, mission is in, I think is it? the information, information is in the disturb order because the address is in the last mm -hmm. and uh, somewhere between Facebook account number and Viber and national whatsoever that may, or email address. So it is in the disturb order, I think. Yes. So it's all messy, you're saying? Yes, yes, obviously. Mm -hmm. I see some of you in the chat saying, is social media not really necessary? So it depends on the role, right? So it depends if you're applying to a marketing position. It depends if you're applying even to a sales position. LinkedIn is considered a social media, right? But a professional one. So yes, yes. The information is also disturbed. The placement of the photo. The, it's pre-formatted, yes. What else? There is a main thing, and I don't think you guys mentioned. It's in the top right corner of the of the CV. Is uh, uh, I think uh, a CV template that is copied. It's in Europass, right? Yes, yes, obviously. So unfortunately, or not, they have put use that the picture data. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Here also in the chat. Anile, uh, I'm not pass. sure if I'm pronouncing it, I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that's exactly it, Europass. So those are not really, uh, they cannot make you different, right? This is what we were talking about as well. So an Europass will look the same for everyone. Of course, in the in the summary, you cannot see what this person is writing, right? In the summary of this, this Europass, but also if this was a specific summary, uh, telling a recruiter about yourself, it is a bit long to know. All right, yeah, what I'm... about this CV here? What's wrong with this CV? I think it does not have full contact address. Mm -hmm. This one has the entire um, address, no? <laughs> so maybe no need to add all of that too. What else? There is no photo. Right. In this case, In this that's case, correct. Because, if you're yeah. applying for a specific UK, mm -hmm. this as you is told. for the UK, exactly. Yeah. But if you're applying to another yeah. country, perhaps it would be interesting to add a photo, right? What else? There is no there are, information. Sorry. What is there it? There are not um, personal data. Okay. And I also think the photo is too big. <laughs> The photo is to be compared to the text, no? Yeah, and the font that it's being used is a little bit hard to read. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Also, there are texts coming from all over the places, no? So there's a text that's coming all the way from the picture down that you have to turn your head to read. Yes. And also the color, right, of the of the CV. So not very readable, not very clear, not very clean. Yeah. Also, I would say the structure. It's weird how there is education, then there is work experience, all like in the same line, no skills. Maybe she is junior. She is a junior. <laughs> Uh, yes. She puts uh, her phone number on the summary mm -hmm. and her address on the summary. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. mm -hmm. or on her target. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You guys got it all. Yeah. Now, let's see if I can mention. I'm going to stop sharing my screen to start sharing another one. Just one second. I'm going to try to mention uh, to show you um, an example of a good CV. So let's see. The CV is also not perfect, okay? But it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. So 
a little bit better. What do you guys think? So here we have a name that we just covered for specific purposes, but it doesn't matter. It's missing something too, though. What is it missing? Education. What is it? Uh, this the CV is missing education information. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> is that oh, yeah. 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 No, no, no. But you're right. You're right. If it was just that, yes. But it's yeah. missing something up, up top. Summary. It's missing something still. Missing. Oh, big, man. missing summary. Profile big. Exactly. It's missing the summary. But apart from the summary, what do you guys think? So there is the contact here. Yeah. It's organized. No, it has the skills or competencies. Mm -hmm. It has um, huge education. What else? Here, the languages on the side, you can yeah. see that it doesn't say B1 or B2, right? But it does say what? It says native, it native. says intermediate. Mm -hmm. What else? I think someone was saying something and I just. Then pick. What is it? Her pick profile. Uh, ah, yes. I, I, I covered it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah covered. <laughs> All right. Yes, because this is actually a real CV that we received in our company. So I had to cover some information. So also um, the last name. But it is a little bit interesting, no? This one is a little bit uh, different from the other ones. What else? It's an advertisement, so we can see some uh, here, some keywords related to that. So just to give you a little bit more of an idea. Now let's go back to the presentation. How are you guys feeling for now? Not okay. Not too much information, no? No. Perfect. <laughs> All right, here we are. Okay, and I brought some fun facts, and maybe actually um, some of you already know that. Mm -hmm. But so here in the UK, because we do know that there are some of you that are looking for positions in the UK, although it's not part of Europe when we normally cover Europe in the UK, yes, it is okay to add the one to two pages. Again, uh, it depends on uh, how much work experience you've had so far. Also, uh, it's recommended not to use a uh, profile picture, so no headshots. It is recommendable to use um, and to, to share your personal information. And when we say that, we say spe specific things, right? Not, um, not usually uh, age or data like that, but your email and your address. Um, it's also recommendable to share your hobbies and interests. And um, when we say no references, is that you don't need to add references or a cover letter attached to your CV because if the company requires it, they normally ask for it, either in the application Later. or in the next phases of the interviews. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then what is it that you can expect in this structure? So in the structure, you have the personal information, your summary, of course, mm -hmm. and then you have the education, you have the work experience, you share your interests. Also, if you're applying for a position in the UK, perhaps it's interesting you know, to use British English and uh, not the American style. So you would be switching the Z to S and then you'll be dropping the U. So like words like flavor, like color and things like that. Labor. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, these are some specific details, but it doesn't mean that you'll be penalized if you, were, if you use uh, American um, also um, style. Also here, uh, I wrote down that those are specific countries where it's not common to use uh, profile pictures in case anyone is interested in applying. So it's the UK, Ireland, and the United States. Mm -hmm. And then here on the right, we have a little bit more um, other countries. So we have Spain, Portugal, Greece, uh, we have Germany. Well, we have other countries as well, but those specific ones, 
Uh, they also allow one to two pages. They do require, uh, in this case, uh, the headshot. Well, a lot of the countries, they actually don't like to say that they require them. But we've noticed that uh, it is recommendable to use them somehow. And so also your personal information, share your hobbies and interests, and also again, here are uh, no references. And then when it comes to the structure, it's the same thing. So uh, use your personal information, uh, add your education, add your employment skills, interests. So um, speaking with some of our um, colleagues here inside of your language jobs that we have some that are from the Netherlands, we notice that's actually very important to uh, share a little bit more of your interests. So in that specific market, recruiters, they do value uh, that. And it doesn't mean that other countries or other companies, they don't. You have to keep in mind here and every time that what we are saying, it's more of a generalized concept, right? Because when you apply to positions, it's not the same thing if you apply to a multinational and if you apply to a startup. They do value different things. The position that you're going to apply um, value different things. So it's always important to do a little bit of research before that. And then under here, we have um, more of the Nordic countries. And so here again, uh, one to two pages, headshot, but usually not in the Denmark. And then um, they usually don't ask for personal information also when it comes to adding your age, right? So where you were born, um, but also um, you should add your email and your phone number, of course. Uh, add your hobbies and interests and uh, no references. So does anyone have any questions for me? What do you guys think about it? I do see that we have some comments also uh, in the chat. I wasn't keeping up with it. I'm so sorry. Let's see. Yeah, some of you are mentioning the mistakes um, in the CVs. Uh, here, shouldn't work experience be first? Again, uh, Dominicas, I think that's how um, you pronounce your name, right? So yes, so work experience should always come first if you do have more work experience than um, let's say if you, if you just graduated, you're not gonna have so much. So if you, if you have graduated five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, and you've had um, a lot uh, experience in the workforce, then we do recommend that you add the work experience beforehand. What else? Anyone else has any questions? Meanwhile, I'm going to share with you um, the next workshop. Well, it's actually a live fair. Um, it's called the walk-in interview with multinational companies. So if you guys are looking for uh, jobs across Europe, we do have an opportunity coming up this Thursday at the same time that this workshop started. So we have uh, the sponsors of the event, which made this event possible, and they are Teleperformance Greece, Fujitsu, Saito Portugal, Majoro Island, TechData, and Mway. They will be participating uh, in this session, the 26th, and they are offering many uh, different positions. Uh, they are looking for different language speakers. So I would really rec recommend um, that you guys participate. And you, I'm going to be sharing now the link with you so you can check Let's see. if uh, i didn't answer some of your guys questions please feel free to mute yourself uh, and ask them to me because i see so many now and I, I'm, I'm afraid i will miss uh, some so here in the chat we have the first link is the registration for our page. So Europe Language Jobs, where we have about 1,800 positions across Europe with different languages, different sectors. Then we have also the email. So candidates at Europe Language Jobs, in case you had a question that you could not remember at this very moment. So feel free to, to email us there. Uh, the live interview is right there. It's uh, bullet point um, number three. So feel free to register. It will be also through Zoom. We will have six companies joining. You guys will have the chance to pitch yourself, basically, get the information from the recruiter. 
Um, and then number four are all of the companies that will be in the event. And I think it could be very interesting for you guys to share, uh, to check uh, their positions, to check if it's interesting. I'm sure that it is even for, for um, the experience, you know, to speak with companies from different um, countries. So I think it could be really cool. I'm going to go over some of your guys' questions. Let's see if I missed any. Here, for a student with no previous relevant experience, how do we showcase our strengths and capabilities for the role? So, yes, um, it's not usually the easiest thing. I remember being also in universities and how are they expecting me to have experience if I didn't have a position or if I didn't work and it's a cycle, you know, what do I do? But we do acquire a lot of knowledge um, in university just by dealing with different students, just by talking to professors, by participating in different events, by working on specific projects. You were able to, of course, uh, maybe you took a specific leader position inside of a group or you took a specific class that uh, was able to teach you a subject that you could definitely use in this position that you're applying to or you volunteered um in a specific area or with an organization and you did this 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 and this task so all of this information from literally almost everything in our lives that we've learned we can use um also in our cvs if it's re uh, relevant right for for the role and obviously once you were able to put that in the cv it's way easier to explain that um, also during an interview and i hope that i responded to your question Let's see if we have more. Is it good to make CV according to job requirements? Yeah, so obviously it's not 100% mandatory, right, to personalize every CV, but uh, we do find that it's very uh, recommendable. So it's very important for companies to see that you took time to apply for their position, that you actually saw the job description, that you are what they're looking for, right? So that's why we say, and you don't have to change your entire CV. You can just reword some sentences, you can change some words, you can reorganize things. You don't have to rewrite an entire CV. You can just customize it a little bit. Also, let's say you like three specific areas. Let's say you work again in marketing, and I'm just saying marketing because I know a little bit more about it. Let's say you want to work in marketing, but you enjoy social media, you enjoy content writing, and you enjoy, uh, I don't know, uh, different positions. And so have a specific CV, a little bit um, leading towards those areas, you know? So have one for content writing, have one for, um, I don't know, graphic designing, have one for, for different things. If you had experience, you can just, you know, uh, reorganize the sentences. And before I forget, um, if you guys can also uh, let me know how is it that um, you heard about this workshop, it would be awesome if it was through Eventbrite, if it was through university, if it was through emails, if you can please let me know, that'd be really nice. Yeah, throw an email. From an email? From email, yeah, I have Perfect. received email. Awesome. From Europe languages. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I heard it from university newsletter. From where? University newsletter in New York. Ah, yeah. So which university? University of York. Awesome, perfect. Yeah. Eventbrite, I see here. Email from Anna, awesome. Anyone else would like to share? I have 30 people here. I heard it from Springboard. Oh, wow. I actually didn't know this place. Awesome. Eventbrite as well. Perfect. Eventbrite. Perfect. So if anyone also heard from social media, that would be just good to know for us. Okay, 
Oh, if you guys don't have any questions, any other questions, um, please um, feel free also. If you have more questions later on and you don't remember them at this very moment, just make sure to uh, reach us out to the candidates at your Penguin Jobs. Um, but I also wanted to thank you for the participation. Uh, some of you <laughs> uh, were more, I guess, um, how to say that a little bit more. Um, it was more natural to participate. Some of you, I saw uh, your mouths moving, but uh, the microphone was muted. But um, thank you again. Thank you for those uh, who were on time and who stayed until the end. And I really hope that the session was very useful. Thank so, you so thank much. You much. Thank you so much for your kind presentation. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It's really interesting information that we got today. And uh, I just want to have one. I have just one question. I want to know uh -huh. that uh, uh, what alignment should be there? It should be in the center alignment or in the left or right? The languages. Uh, no, no, it's not the languages. When we write the CV, fine. We should have to write from the left to right alignment in the word word or it should be the central alignment or in the right alignment. Right, I think it depends on the template that you choose. I think that's what you're asking me, but um, normally um, they are like the, the templates that, that I showed you, the last one that, um, that was most, most of like the good one. Uh, this is the one that I would use. Uh, it doesn't matter much. Or it doesn't matter. No, the where you structure your CV, I don't know if I'm responding correctly or am I? Yes, 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 yes. You're getting it correct. You know? Yes. Yes, it depends on the template. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. No. Okay. So right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mom, I have a question. Um, yes. Maybe it's, it's not related to, to the event uh, or uh, written CV, but uh, I, uh, this is my second time to, to assist to your uh, presentation. Awesome. And, and thank you for that. And the first one, it was you put up couple, uh, some links for where I can apply to send my application. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I get a reply. But the issue is about um, uh, since I am not European, I, I even I get to the, the second level in the, the job interview, mm -hmm. but when I reach uh, the, the paperwork, they mm -hmm. said uh, no. I see. Unfortunately, this is a part that a lot of people go through, and it is very difficult because some companies, they do sponsor, and others, they don't. And it depends on the sector, it depends on the company, it depends on many, many things. And unfortunately, this is something that us as a job board, we don't have any saying uh, into it, but um, I would look for, I would continue in my search. If your goal is to come you know, to Europe, I would continue that. But it is easier to start uh, also with an internship. So let's say you use yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I am uh, now based in Germany mm -hmm. and I am in my last semester, I am as a student in student visa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm applying for, for here, even internship or entry level position uh -huh. in Germany or in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the two uh, applications that I uh, uh, received the reply, they get impressed about, about my skills, even they like the, the profile and they want and they have in touch with the customer because you are is like in between the customer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, always the issue is the paperwork. They want mm -hmm. people do, who are European, who are uh, easy to get uh, the passport and easy to get uh, a job, uh, job permit. I because see. I am from Algeria and I am out of European Union. Yeah. And these positions, they were in Germany. Or they were uh, the first one it was uh, in uh, Belgium mm -hmm. and the second one it was um, I'm not sure maybe it's between Portugal and Athens mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah so yeah. from what I understood from the universities that we collaborate with and I you have to check with your university but a lot of the times when you apply um, and you are still a student and even after you graduate I believe that you have a certain time that you can work in Germany. Yeah. So job maybe seeker, job seeker visa, one year and a half. Yeah. 
but maybe then try to look for positions in Germany because those positions that you mentioned, they were not uh, there, right? So let's say you're applying for a position now in Spain, you ha might have the same uh, challenge because you need to ask for another visa, right? To be honest, to be honest, and to be fair, uh, just uh, two hours ago, mm -hmm. I received not, not an email, a call from mm -hmm. some, someone. And um, when I explained to him, I'm in my last semester, he told me uh, the HR doesn't allow allow him to uh, to hire me. And then he told me in September, uh, I will uh, get this visa. Tell me, call, the call, call, me call him back. He told me write this happened. number down. <laughs> yeah. Write this number down for sure. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I already have it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it's a challenge that a lot of uh, people go through. I went through that when I was in the United States because I didn't have a green card. Are you from the US? Are you from US? No, I am from different <laughs> countries, but okay. I didn't. But I didn't have, um, of course, the green card in the US. So yeah. I had the same issue. I was able to work though with the student. Mm -hmm. So I would try to stick, if I were you, I would focus your energies in, in Germany then, because it will be maybe a little bit easier in that sense. You can also prove yourself, right? During that period. And yeah. then it might be a little bit um, better. Mm -hmm. So okay. Lucina now, she, she just responded to you. She's one of my colleagues. Yeah, I see something graphic. But yes. Uh, so yeah. talking to the university, making sure that you can get that paperwork straight to work in Germany, I think it's already, um, it will probably be the, be the best way to go for yeah. now. I hope so. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, so much. thank you. Of course. You're really good. You're really good. <laughs> thank you. I hope to see you the 26th. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Would anyone else like to uh, ask any questions um, or if everyone is good, then we can just uh, conclude the session, but always remember that you can reach out, you can add me on LinkedIn, you can uh, write down to us uh, through email, and we are definitely looking forward uh, to the next workshops as well. Thank you. Have a nice evening. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Thank you so much, Basari. Thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.